haircut because I'm walking and the sun is getting so strong now. In this vlog, I think what I'm gonna do, because we're leaving next week, and I kinda wanna recap all the fun stuff that there is to do here, give you guys some tips, recommendations, uh, good like restaurants to eat at, and activities, how to find them, so on and so forth. Body strength. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, what's in here? My favorite cake place. So cute. I can't see. So first off, let's talk about where to stay. We want to stay in this area right here. This inside this circle, obviously. So I used to recommend to stay inside of CTM and uh, Benito Juarez. But now this time around 2024, it's growing so much out here. I would actually even say you could look in this kind of area like Gaia 50 all the way to 60 because there's new developments happening and this part is growing so much um, and then what I what now I'm recommending is like maybe not so much close to Benito Juarez it's just getting way way touristy um, it's just kind of crowded uh, so I would push this up a little bit um, just like that but there's so many different great spots but it will be anywhere you are in this general area you're gonna find some good accommodations and lots of restaurants and things to do all of this is dependent on what kind of experience you want to have but I am gonna be speaking towards people who uh, work online so you need to have you know, good Wi-Fi, good working conditions, close to cafes, close to the grocery stores, um, and and a gym. I think I feel like that is high up on people's priority list. also known as Disney World or at least that's what our apartment manager calls it because it's literally like Disney World I mean like you're gonna run into people that you know and meet when you start going to a lot of events and you you're just gonna see the same people around because Playa is built like a big grid David and I actually like staying around CTM and Cozumel that's where we used to live before we left Playa and we started traveling a bit more. Um, currently, we're staying 34th and 10th, which is also a really good area. As you've seen in a lot of my videos, it's like right across the street from the soccer field and you can just see everything happening in there. It's just like a very active corner. So now that you have found your apartment to stay in, you're going to need to work, right? So if you're a digital nomad moving here and you're looking for a reliable place where you can connect and not lose power, because um, obviously there's always the option of working at your own apartment, which is something that David and I do a lot, especially because sometimes we have calls. Um, so we just like to kind of stay put somewhere so that we can have calls that are not gonna drop. But if you're looking to work outside of your apartment, there are a couple of options for you. There's Nest, which is one of the main co-work spaces here. 
Um, that's actually where I did my very first talk uh, from a few vlogs ago. I'll link it above. That's a really cool co work space. And uh, Moni, who's the manager there, she actually does a really great job of organizing uh, events there. So that's a place I would recommend. Another one is called Bunker. Bunker, it, it, it's honestly it's a lot like it sounds it's like a bunker not a lot of windows it's kind of small and tight but it has pretty good Wi-Fi and the upstairs meeting space has air conditioning so that's really nice uh, so you can set yourself up and you know, have a, a nice desk and working environment which is important for a lot of us other than that I would recommend cafes there's a lot of cafes here uh, the issue that you're gonna run into is sometimes it's just really hot to to work outside and a lot of the cafes have like a open air concept so it's kind of hard to sit there with your computer overheating and all of that but a good cafe is Bajo that's one of my favorite ones also went there in a couple of my past vlogs while being here in Playa um, but they have good food great service and it's just a really beachy environment too, which is kind of cool. It's just, if it gets hot, if it's hot during the day, if you're coming in the summer, it could get a little unbearable outside. It's also Quadra, which is off of CTM, and I think 10th, um, but that has indoor space and it has AC, and the Wi-Fi is pretty good there, and the coffee is really good. So that's always a bonus. Um, but other than that, I mean, there's just, there's so many spots. There's new ones popping up all the time too. Um, but I would look into some cafes. Playa is one of the hubs that has a ton of cafes. And a last one that I want to throw in is La Ceiba. That's the park that I went to. I forget how many vlogs back, but there's a cafe in the park and they have um, pretty good Wi-Fi, honestly. Next on the list for you guys is grocery shopping. I like to put in these kinds of tips because I feel like it's more realistic for your day-to-day -day living. And these are just questions and things that I Google when I'm going to a spot um, because all of this matters, you know? Like you still wanna try and keep your, your lifestyle in order. So here are some grocery stores that we have been going to and just the big ones in the area. So um, Mega Soriana, that's the best one in my opinion. It's a local, local chain and they have local prices, um, but it's a big one. Think about it almost like Mexico's Walmart. Um, and they also, and I'm saying Walmart because they also have like clothes, you can buy socks there if you're looking for socks, you know. Uh, you can get kitchen utensils. Um, for us, we like broke a couple of mugs at our apartment, so we have to replace them, you know, because they charge you for it. So we're gonna go to Mega and just grab a couple there. Um, but it's kind of like a one-stop shop for a lot of what you will need and it has good prices. Now with all of these, this is what I want to say because sometimes people go to these grocery stores and they're like, oh, I'm paying the same price as I do in the States. Like what's, you know, I don't understand. But of course, if you're going to buy imported products, so like the same brands that you're getting from the States, it's probably even gonna be more expensive because you have to pay import taxes on top of this. So it's just, instead of going for the American brand that you're used to, look for the alternative from a local brand. So if you can follow that kind of process, that's where you can really see the savings and a difference in what it costs to live in places like this. So with that out the way, Mega Soriana is, would be my recommendation. The uh, next one that's like super local is called Super Aquí. This is super local though. Like you're not gonna find, like for me, I like, I like hazelnut cream or the coffee mate one. And that's what I look for every time and I'm happy to pay the expensive rate that it is. Um, but I probably would not find that at Supereki. Like it's only gonna have local brands, which is fine because sometimes that's what I'm looking for, right? Um, but that's that's the other local one. Uh, Chedrawi 
is local, but it's a Chedrawi Select. That's the one that me and David have been going to because it's literally around the corner from our building. The only thing is it's probably the most expensive place um, to go. Um, think of this almost like, I don't know how to compare it because it's not exactly like uh, the same, but think like Central Market kind of vibe. Like, so it's a little more upscale and things are a little bit more expensive there. But if you're buying all local brands, you know, and you're, they have a butcher shop inside too, go to the butcher area and get your meats there um, and don't get anything packaged. Like there's, there's little ways that you can do this to, to save. Um, but that's the Chidrawi Select. The other one that I would recommend, oh, obviously there's a Walmart. Uh, and Walmart is Walmart. It, I mean, it's the same. So I do go there when I want very specific items that I know Walmart carries. There's also a Costco and same thing. It's Costco, it's Costco. So it, the Costco is just farther out. So you do have to either get a taxi there or if you have a car, you know, you'll just have to drive there. Um, the other one that's really cool that I want to put on my list is DAC. This is a fruits and vegetables um, store and they have very fresh fruits and veggies. And if I remember correctly, you can uh, get things delivered. Uh, so depending on what area of the grid of the Disney World that you're living in, if any of these places are too far, some of them do deliver on Rappi. Um, so Rappi is the app, it's almost like the Uber Eats here. So you can order your groceries that way. Um, and then of course there's the little fruterias, the little panderias, the carnesarias, like there's all the smaller, uh, more specific little stops that you can find all around little corners. Um, and those are specific to whatever kind of the ad they are. <laughs> The next thing I want to cover is where to eat. I feel like this is important, especially in Playa, because for some reason, there's not a whole lot of really good food. And I've heard a lot of different reasons for this. One of them is that there's some kind of issue getting the ingredients out here, which I don't quite understand. Um, but that being said, there are a lot more restaurants that I do recommend that are really good um, coming back here this year. I wrote down the ones that I recommend. Don't want to leave any out. The first one, El Fogon. This is one I've, like, this trip that we've been here, we got here January, well, when did we get here? December 30th. So we've been here like three months. Um, and I've been back to El Fogon probably four to three or four times, but for good reason. It's it's really good Mexican food. So definitely put that on your list. The next one that's also Mexican food, but it's more ceviche Mexican food. So like it's the kind of Mexican restaurant you would expect to go to in a beach town. And that's called Clandestino. And this is one of those little restaurants with not shiny, branding they have plastic chairs and tables and a radio blasting in the back of the restaurant it is so good um i definitely recommend this spot for ceviche and beers after a beach day so put that on your list also okay this is a new one that popped up that i hadn't been to before uh, it's called tropical taco and this is all the way down Fifth Avenue past CTM. Um, and it's it's tacos, but like with a pretty twist. Um, this is where I dropped my camera when all of my girlfriends were in town. I'll put that video up here. There's so many flashbacks, but they have really good tacos there. And it's kind of a cool vibe. It's like a young, like hips, like Mexican hipster vibe, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's get into some pizza because you know your girl likes pizza. So a classic restaurant that I have loved getting pizza from here is Don Chendo. The only qualms I have with that is 
I was getting stomach aches after I ate the pizza and I don't know if it's because I'm lactose intolerant every once in a while you, I don't know if anyone watching is lactose intolerant but it kind of comes and goes so I don't know if it was because of that or just the something in the pizza but the pizzas are so good they are deep dish like Chicago style pizza um, but another one, a new one that David and I went to for his birthday with some of our friends is called Papaya Slice and they also have deep dish but regular and the deep dish is, my mouth is watering, like I almost want to go there tonight for dinner. The pizza there is so delicious, like definitely the best pizza I've had in Playa, hands down, and it's fairly new. Um, and it's a, another cool like area that I would recommend being near um, So yeah, put that on your list if you're a pizza gal another cool restaurant that Used to be in my opinion way cooler because it was really small limited space kind of hard to get in it just had that uh, exclusiveness about it uh, it's called Raka's Jamaican jerk chicken and They've grown since then. I'm referring back to like 2020, 2021, but they've grown a lot since then and they actually moved to a much larger location in the most popular street in Playa, 38th Street. And good for them. You know, they're growing, they're expanding, so I'm really happy for them. But I don't know, some of the atmosphere is just not the same. It kind of just feels like you're going to another big, touristy restaurant but they do have good food so if you're looking for a restaurant around 38th and you've got a big crowd with you uh, make sure to make reservations because it does get booked out um, but they have really great jerk chicken and mac and cheese so definitely recommend that another one that's off the topic of Mexican food is Moo Burger this is obviously a burger place they have really good fancy burgers uh, so if you're a burger snob keep in mind this is Mexico and uh, they yeah they're doing like fancy Angus beef burgers with uh, fancy fries and a, but it's like the ambiance is really cute too it's right off 10th they have nice lighting uh, drinks all of that deal so that's a cool spot if you're looking for breakfast, there's a bunch of cafes here and even more popping up all the time. But a few I would recommend are Que Huevo, uh, Shushu, Bajo Cafe, Pitsy Shushu, which is another Shushu, a smaller one that's opened down Fifth Ave. And they are, there's also a small Bajo also opened down Fifth Ave. There's a bunch. I mean, there's cafes literally every everywhere. So you will not be short of any breakfast spots that's for sure if you're looking for a date night um looking for something on the beach kind of fancy there's two that i recommend and they both have very different vibes one is lido this is where uh, when david's family was in town we took them but it's right on the beach they have really nice food it's like wine on the beach very peaceful vibey music has like a little tulum vibe but not so party more chill tulum vibe um and they have like the beach lanterns and you could sit there kick your shoes off right on the sand um but it's so romantic and the entrance is really cute to take photos in and the other one is fusion it's right on the beach also but it has live music um, it has a louder atmosphere, uh, it's more of like party vibe, not quite as much as like Zenzi, which is another super loud bar right on the beach, um, but it's, it's a cool vibe. You know, check Google, look for highly rated reviewed, high, high review rated locations if you're looking for a place to eat unfortunately playa is not a place where you can just stumble into any restaurant and have an incredible meal um, so yeah just keep that in mind Uh, 
Next on the list that I really wanna make sure to share is events and how to find them because I think that this is a really important thing to discuss that a lot of people don't actually know. So um, I also wrote down some big events that I like doing and then also just events that I've been doing since I've been here this round. First one, one of my favorites, obviously beach volleyball. Uh, you're right on the beach um, and there's a pretty big community here for it and that you can find through a WhatsApp group. You can also just show up. Uh, I joined back in 2020 and the, the way that the group functions has changed, obviously. It's evolved, people come and go. Um, but today in 2024, I think they play on Tuesdays and Sundays and it's usually around three o'clock and I don't know how long they go into the night, um, but that's a really fun thing to do. Another one is that I've been going to a lot this time around is the, beat, the, um, the field workouts. I like going to those because I feel like, um, for me, I'm like such a team sport girl so like it's hard for me to go to the gym honestly because like i want to be i want to be like with a team somewhere so this was a perfect solution for me um if you already you know you don't have a hard time going to the gym obviously there's evolve that's like a huge gym here that turns into a club with like djs and, but it's like for sure like a popular gym um, but if that's not your thing the field workouts are so fun i don't know how long they'll be doing it considering that the summers get really hot here uh another one which is one that i went to re uh, when i first got here to playa it's called a uh, practical philosophy and this happens every tuesday at 6 30 the, the location i think changes pretty frequently but um right now they are at I don't know if I'm saying the name of this hotel correctly, but it's Scion, I think is how you would call it. And they meet there, 6.30. And that's a fun thing to do if you don't like drinking, uh, you don't like loud music, big party scene. That meetup is specifically to go and have deep conversations with people about a specific topic. And there's structure around it, so it's more structured than the way I'm describing it now, but I think it's just a really different, cool event where you could also go and meet people. Um, there's also comedy nights. Again, I don't know how long this is gonna be happening, but as of today, um, comedy nights happen every Tuesday. The doors open at eight o'clock. Another really cool uh, activity that you can go to is called Language Exchange and I love finding these, especially in digital nomad hubs like this. And like, there's just a whole bunch of expats um, that are living here from so many different countries speaking so many other languages other than English and Spanish. So that's always really cool. And um, they have a meetup every Friday. Let me pull my notes because I wrote it down. Those are, uh, and they do karaoke every Friday at 8 p.m. at Sandbar Beach House. Now this is one that I haven't gone to, but it's definitely one that I've had on my list and I just didn't get around to going, but what a fun concept. And who doesn't love karaoke? Okay, the next one that I wanna make sure to drop in here is, there's an event called Digital Community Meetup. This happens every Wednesday. It's, it is more of like a networking vibe, um, but they have two for one drinks and it's at Cuarto Elemento, which is off of 38th, so that's really cool. And it's every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Um, again, with all of these, I don't know how long these events are gonna last, but if you're watching this in 2024, most likely it's still happening. Another one that's like super popular, everybody knows this one, it's Laura's Quiz Night. Uh, Laura's the, also the girl that runs the Lunch and Learns, and she also runs another event called Quiz Nights, and this happens every Tuesday at 8 p.m. at Buzo's, which is the same location that we do the Lunch and Learns. 
Um, so that's a more, that's like a pretty competitive, but it's really fun. So how can you find a lot of these events? I would say go start, like if you're not in any WhatsApp groups at all, because that's what you're trying to get into is all the WhatsApp groups. But let's say you're starting fresh and you don't have any connections here. Start with a Facebook group. So go into Facebook, look for like digital nomads, in Playa del Carmen, there's a whole bunch of groups. Start there and uh, start searching in there for some links because people drop links. And I swear to God, once you're in one, you're gonna see them all. Like you're gonna, there's so many meetups. And I think there's like a master, like a super huge master spreadsheet that has links to all of them. I've seen that floating through a couple of WhatsApp chats. Um, but honestly, you can't miss it. So just try to get into one and start with the Facebook groups um, or go to the one of these events and ask somebody if they can add you to the WhatsApp group. But being in the WhatsApp groups is a game changer because you can kind of have an eye on all of the things you're interested in uh, at a quick glance and you can just, you know, create a little a little schedule, a little calendar for yourself about events that you wanna do in and around Playa, especially for solo travelers. It's, this is a really good way to make friends while you're living here. Last but not least, all the ways to enjoy this beautiful area, Playa del Carmen and the surrounding spots. So I have another list for that because there are so many things to do, uh, especially so if you're having friends or family come in town, or maybe you're just coming for like two weeks or something and you really wanna map out a full itinerary. Um, you cannot miss the cenotes. That's like a big thing to do here. There's so many cenotes um, and you can jump into a taxi, you can catch a colectivo, you can rent a car. Uh, you can buy tours, like excur excursion tours from hotels, uh, and they'll take you to lots of different cenotes. There's a bunch, uh, but make sure you add that to your checklist when you're doing here. Obviously, the beaches were on the Caribbean Sea here, so the beach is beautiful. Uh, Playa del Carmen, in my opinion, has one of the prettiest beaches. Tulum is a pretty beach, it's just, it's very expensive to go to the beaches there because the only available beach area is through the hotel. So you have to pay like an entrance, uh, but it's it's beautiful also. And if you want to get catered to, you know, you can have your drinks and your food. Um, but Playa del Carmen, there's a free beach. It's Coco Beach. Uh, all along, actually, Playa is free. But if you go down towards Coco Beach, so like towards the 78th area from CTM to like 78th, all of that is open public beach and there's not, it's not flooded with like restaurants and bars. Um, so it's just, it's a really cool long beach area. Cozumel has beautiful beaches also. That's just a ferry ride away. And there's Akumal Beach. There's just like, there's so many little beaches all around. So make sure that you hit up some of the beaches and soak in the sun. Uh, if you're more into like spirituality uh, kind of vibe, there's a whole bunch of that kind of stuff too. There's a really good ayahuasca, ceremony run by a man named Ruben. He's a shaman here, highly recommend him. Uh, me and a lot of my friends have gone through a ceremony with him. Uh, so it's really reliable, he's legit, and it's a beautiful experience. Um, but there's also, again, a lot of WhatsApp chats uh, where you can go to cacao ceremonies, sound bath ceremonies, water dance ceremonies, um, mushroom ceremony, like there's just meditation, yoga, there's sunrise yoga, there's so much stuff to do in the spiritual side of experiences here. So definitely look out for WhatsApp groups. Um, and you could even walk into local cafes and look on the walls where they post like flyers and stuff and show up to some of those events. There's a lot, there's all, they're all over. There's yoga studios also, you can walk into the yoga studios and find some events there, um, but you'll be where really well connected uh, if you're looking for that kind of experience also. Another cool way to enjoy the area, there's a bunch of rooftop pools. This is fun, this is like party vibe. Um, there's the Thompson roof. There's actually two Thompson hotels here. One has a really beautiful view. 
Uh, it's a rooftop and you could like see the ocean. You could see a lot, you know, from Playa up top. Thompson also has another location where they have a beach club and you could just kind of run into the beach and then come back and they have a swimming pool there too. But lots of pool uh, events and activities that you can do. The reef is one that we went to in, uh, I forget which vlog in the past that we've done. Um, but yeah, definitely hit up the rooftop pools if that's more your vibe. In general, there is too much to do in Playa. So I would first think about the kind of experience that you're trying to have and then you could build out lots of different things. Honestly, I feel like there's a meetup and a group chat for just about any kind of experience or interest that you might have. And if for some reason you don't find one, Playa is definitely the place where you can start one of your own and I guarantee you'll have at least 10 people interested in whatever it is you're starting. So I hope this has been really helpful for you guys. You can find my stories on all of the stuff we've been doing here. I have a vlog series about Playa del Carmen and you could also follow me on Instagram to see more up-to-date things that are happening in my day-to-day -day life, which is a lot more active than the YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed and you made it this far, I think that means you wanna subscribe and continue to watch videos like this. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you liked this video, leave me a like, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.